clay for the light switch cover has been silk screened and I picked it it's rolled on a number three and I picked it up gently with my blade down on my work surface at a 45 degree angle and I didn't pull the clay up I loosened it and then held it up okay I've taken an alcohol swab and cleaned off everything onto my light switch cover and I want to lay my clay on my light switch cover and gently press it down. This is after my silk screen had dried completely. And I'm just gently pressing the clay down around the light switch cover. Okay, I probably should have started working on a tile with a piece of silicone mat laying on it. But I forgot about it. Because I want to be able to manipulate this from both sides, but I don't want to remove the silk screen. So I don't want it to silk screen the paint. If it's even if it's dry, if it lands on a surface that could slightly even pull it off of the clay it's going to so you've got to be careful when you're turning your silk screen down on a surface what kind of surface you can put it on you can put it on parchment paper as well um, I just happen to have this tile I cut uh, the handy, the silicone handy mat that Tiny Pandora has, I cut it up into sections to fit what I wanted it to go on. And this tile was one of them. Because this is the size I used to work with and to bake on. So I just wanted a piece of silicone to be able to work on it. I'm going to keep my clay separated here because this is my Skinner blend under here. And I will still keep the color separated and I'm just cutting down the sides of it to give me enough to wrap over the sides. And they're not very thick so it doesn't take very much. I see I'm going to lift that right up off of there. And I'm just gently going to push it over the side. Especially with this blue clay. That was the clay that was drier than the white. And I want to check for air bubbles. I can work them out towards the center here where I'm going to cut that out for the light switch. I'm going to press down where my screws are going to go in. Be careful your fingers aren't sticky and pull the paint up off your clay. It's better to work with it little by little and let it warm up than it is trying to pull it. You might pull off your silk screen. I just made an indentation where the light switch cover goes. And we'll turn this over. And I'm going to run my X-Acto knife right in that rectangle. And be careful with your fingers on the other side. Don't cut them. And if it's not coming out straight, 
go to the front side and cut that last piece out. Then I also press those edges down on the light switch cover. And I take my X-Acto knife and I trim out that little space again. Make sure it's all even. Okay. Front of that's cut out. If you have additional clay on the back, loosen it up just enough and either take your exacto knife or your blade. Got to make sure the sides are on there though to cut off the back. And just run your blade right down. See where it's loosening up right there? Just press that back on there before you continue cutting. press it on and your corners just work them down okay the only thing we have to cut out now are the screw holes and I have a little tube that actually came from a really, really, really cheap wind chime, wind chime set that my grandson had that fit these holes perfectly. But let's see if we can't find one in these cutters. Yeah. Let me get a needle tool and pull that out of there. You just find where your hole is. If you push down, you'll be able to see it. Put your cutter right on top of it and twist. That one came out. Okay. Check and make sure it's down everywhere. All the sides are trimmed off. This one isn't right here in this corner. Okay, so here it is, and we will put the notes on it, and I'm thinking about adding a border on the outside. I did some of those to my light switch plates in the kitchen, and they really look great. So, um, I'm thinking about doing that on this one. This is going to go in the room where my um, piano is. You'd have to get close to see this one. This is from that mold. And it actually says music. And I took silver Inca gold and just rubbed over the top of it just to be able to read it because it was so small. And I did the same thing with the treble clef. It was so small. But they're cute. And I wanted to use them so I thought if I put the silver on them it would help them stand out some. And then we're going to put the uh, 
liquid sculpted black that's already baked. I'll put this in a mold. I do quite a few of them at a time, so I'll have them handy for projects. And where this little loop is right here is where I'm going to set that screw hole down here. And that way it won't interfere with the screw. So I think the way the notes are set up on this one, I'm not going to put any canes of ivies on it that I had planned. Like the treble clef one. Or some of the music note ones. I think this is busy enough. I'm going to bake it all at one time even with my liquid clay pieces on there. But first let me give a little bit more thought to putting an edge around it. And let's see what you think. I'm putting an edge, just a strip of clay, and I'll show you how I cut them. Of the solid blue color that I had left and it's not very wide and it hasn't covered all of the stripping yet but I will put another layer around there and one piece actually covered two sides and I'm using just a little bit of liquid clay or bacon bond or bake a bowl adhesive and putting it on and just rubbing it up the sides with my fingers this is raw clay to raw clay so it will hold there's no problem about that I just want to give it that extra security of staying there and this helps now you've got liquid clay or whatever on your finger you need to make sure you get that off your finger because if your finger with that on there touches your silk screen it's going to mess up your silk screen okay i cut i cut my clay into little tiny strips and this is what I'm going to put around the edge of the light switch I'm going to meet up at my corners, corners are easier to blend I'm just going to lay it on there and gently press it down When you get to the corner, make sure that you don't have any air in that corner there. And just gently press it down. Make sure you don't get any liquid clay on your fingers while you're doing this so your liquid clay comes off onto your silk screen and pulls your silk screen off. You don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it like this. with just one layer around it where I can actually take another layer and go around it and make it just a little bit thicker and a little bit more noticeable which is what I think I'm going to do because I'm going to take my needle tool 
or sculpting tool and um, put a little bit of texture in it. Very simple, very easy to do. It just adds that little bit of um, cuteness to it. Plus, you've got to seal these because of your silk screen. And I'm not going to put liquid clay on this one because it is definitely raw clay to raw clay going right over top of each other. And I'm just gently pressing it down, putting it into place because that liquid clay under there makes this movable because it's not cured yet. And I still need a little bit more. So I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to press that together. Lay this down and gently with the silicone tip tool press this together so the two layers stick. I want them to stick to the light switch cover and I want them to stick to themselves. So adding that little bit of pressure just helps the all the clay grab. Okay, I'm using a long blade to um, cut my strips. I think this is the Mega Blade from Tiny Pandora. And it's rigid so it keeps everything straight. A tissue blade will not cut straight lines very easily. And I'm just using my X-Acto knife to help pull it up off my glass surface. my edges up. And again just lay my clay on top of the other strip. Make sure there's no air trapped in between those two layers you're putting on there. And I've got just a little corner here that I didn't quite have enough, so let me make a straight edge. And a straight edge on this one. And it goes right, not even an inch long. Okay. Now I'm going to take, I'll make sure they're where I want them first. And I'm going to take just the side of my X Acto knife and run around it to help get the air out. And to meet the lines up where I join the clay together. Which really isn't, you don't have to have that perfect for this. Because I'm getting ready to texture it. So you won't be able to tell 
which is a texture mark and which is your joining mark. Not too much pressure at all. And you don't have to do the edge around them. I just happen to like edges around some of them. And this one's going in a corner in my craft room. My piano's in my craft room. And uh, so I'm just going to put it in the corner with my uh, music. I'm just taking my needle tool ever so often and laying in lines and I'll do that all the way around and this also helps stick them together better Just gives a little bit more movement to the border that you put on. And like I say, these become very addictable to do. Because you can do them to match your room. And I've done all the light switch covers and receptacle covers in almost every room of my house. I think I've got the laundry room left to go. And that may be it. No, I have one more in my living room to do. Okay. Here we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now to add my little decorations, I'm going to put a drop of the liquid clay or bakeable adhesive because this is already baked and it's going on raw clay and you know you have to have something there to hold it and I'm going to put this little guy up in this corner I'm going to do the same thing with my music. These are really, really small mold pieces. And there's not too many places you can put them to where you can actually read them. I'm just gently pressing those down. Same thing for my larger one. And I know they're not yourself, maybe, but somebody you know loves music or plays an instrument or... Um, a grandchild or a child even that plays an instrument 
Uh, music got me and both my daughters through high school. So, music at our house is very well loved. All kinds of music. want to make sure that's not going to interfere with that screw hole right here. They're pressed down securely. And I know I've got liquid clay on my fingers, so I don't want to touch this any more than I have to. So there we go. I'll bake it at just see this was all primo. It'll be baked at 275. I bake things for a half hour when they're this thin and let them cool completely in the oven. And then it's ready to seal. And we'll decide then what we're going to use to seal it with.